All right, so this trip just took a low-key disastrous turn. Arrived in hospital, they're about to do blood tests. Because I don't know if I can speak any longer. Okay, well, as you saw, we drove down all the way to the south of Thailand overnight, about seven hours drive, and we have arrived in the damp tropics. There is a whole array of species here that you don't get elsewhere, and honestly, I cannot wait to get out and start herping. This is where I spent so much time in my youth when I lived in Thailand, particularly in this area. So, let's get to it. All right, just touched down on our destination like one minute ago. And uh, we got one of these tropical southern forest snakes. I know it looks like the ones we get around our house, but I promise it's a different member of the genus. This is a Hatula micterizans, the Malayan, uh, micterizans, the Malayan vine snake. Anyway, I'm going to catch this so the other guys can take a look. Okay, so there's the first snake of our southern Thailand trip. The Malayan vine snake, Hatilamix herazans. Very pretty species. Not sure if anyone is going to photograph this because it is common and I'm sure we're going to see more on this trip in the locations that we're going to. But uh, yeah, definitely the most pretty of the Hatilis in terms of like head shape. And you can tell it apart from quite a few things. It's a bit more limey green, has a different, it says more of like a uh, striated pattern on the neck rather than the sort of digital pattern that Prasina has, and also it's anal scale is entire. All right, well, I'll hand this off to someone else. I just spotted a couple very, very nice frogs. I think these are called uh, painted tree frogs, Nyctalixis pictus, and they are definitely one of the sort of prettier frogs we get in southern Thailand. Thailand, not the most blessed place for frogs, but uh, I'm a big fan of these. I've seen them uh, just a couple times in Thailand. I'm not much of a frog guy, but really, really nice. All right, just got our second snake of the night. It's taken a while. Seeing a lot of stuff, a lot of mammals, a lot of cool frogs, interesting lizards, although I kept losing them. But uh, only two snakes so far have been a Hatula micterizans, the Malayan vine snake. I'm just gonna leave this one here. I doubt the guys will be interested in another. All right, we've been walking around for like two hours now. So far, we've only seen those two vine snakes. Um, we're headed towards some water now or at least we hope so there may be some more stuff on the way asap three hours of hiking in and we only just got our third snake and uh, this one is a hatila prasina the oriental vine snake you can tell the color is different the head shape is different and the venter is different as well this is the very neon col colored one, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it here. I'll ask the guys if they wanna see it, but I, I left them back at the car to do some more searching. But uh, second species of the night, another vine snake. But uh, we're gonna keep searching, don't worry. There could be more to come, I hope so. Okay, so just after that vine snake, we did get another species for the night. Um, not really what we were hoping for, considering these are common in our back garden, but it's a... Uh, a nice juvenile southern Malayan pit viper. Uh, the southern doesn't mean it's a different species, I just specified that it's southern. This is still Calasalasma, Cuddlesalasma rhodostoma. Um, but it's good that we just racked up another two species for the night in quick succession. Just gonna film some video of this. Uh, it's weird, I actually just heard a, a little weird rustling in the leaf litter and I looked down and I saw this guy, but it wasn't him moving, it was some stupid cicada that like bumped into it. He was so, so low down when I spotted him, he's gone a bit higher now, but uh, there's like our fifth slow loris of the night. All the rest were like stupidly high in trees, but this one when I spotted him was way down in this bamboo. These are quite cool nocturnal primate thingies. Nocturnal venomous primate. Yeah, okay. Goodbye, bro. All right, so we had an absolute disaster at the first spot. I had a tactical reassessment and went to a more old, reliable spot to do a bit of cruising and maybe a bit of poking around with a torch. And like one minute into cruising, we got a, another Malayan pit viper and actually a really pretty one at that. So got some really nice yellows on the back, very clean on the sides, like complete antithesis of the ones we see around Huahen. 
which are like very speckled on the sides. But yeah, just another cuddle, so I'm gonna nail. I'll let this one cruise off. All right, it's 2 a.m., but we've decided we're gonna do a little more walking, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. See if we can't turn up something decent to end the night. Let's get to it. Okay, well, very uh, mixed feelings about this. So right here is a Malayan crate and we are watching it hunt. I think it may have found a snake in there because it's desperately trying to get into a crack in this rock. This is amazing, this is great. This is actually a really good find to cap what has been one of the biggest struggle days slash nights I've had herping for a while. I've never seen a Malayan crate in this particular area. The only reason why it's a little bit like uh, mixed feelings or is bittersweet is because it was this was literally the highlight of the last video. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna stumble over my words a lot because I'm tired as hell. Yeah, it's kind of small. It's like really trying to get into these cracks in this hole. So it definitely smells something in there. Okay, so here you can see this sub-adult Malayan crate. I didn't realize how small it was until we actually picked it up. Um, but it's really nice. I don't know if it comes out on camera, but it's almost like pinkish in the white and so clean. At this age, they don't have any black between the scales, which makes them just so cool looking. They also have this nice pail on the head at this age. I haven't seen a juvenile Malayan crate for many, many, many years. Same. Since, for like, not even kidding, like eight years probably. But uh, yeah, very, very good way. If this is how we end the night, I'm very happy with this. I'm never, ever tired of seeing these guys. What a cool find. We made some like stupid stop at the mangroves on the way back to see if we could get another crate because they found these and we actually, we found the Nos Goose, the Serb. It's actually a really nice banded one. All right, now I got this um, rather attractive Cerberus CF Schneider eye up on the boardwalk. I can kind of wrap up this part of the video. This has been a well, unproductive as far as like species, we only found relatively common stuff tonight. You know, candidus is great and always welcome, but uh, as far as new snakes for the channel go, only Prasina, McTerrazans, and I guess this guy here now. So not the worst day ever, far from the best. We, we exerted a lot of effort. We've been out from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Just wrapping up now, I'm gonna crash out and I'll uh, catch up with you guys when we've made a decision on what we're gonna do tomorrow because that's still in the balance, but. All right, and we are out second night in the south. This area, well, chance of us seeing anything new and exciting, it's kind of low here, but if we did see something new and exciting here, I know it would be very new and exciting, which is why we're here. So uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, quickly found our first snake of the night and very predictably. It is the cuddle. But uh, David spotted this one in situ just after we were saying that it's so rare that you see them like when they're not moving or not sitting in the open. But that's a brilliant little in situ there. And it's quite a pretty individual. You see the whites on the side. Just, David just spotted something. I've never seen this particular spot today, although I know quite a few other people who've seen them here. This is a juvenile mock viper, Zama dynastes pulverulentus which is uh, a very common species across Thailand generally, but down here in the south can be very like touch or go. But yeah, this is just a very soft brown one. Sexual dimorphism in between males and females is actually not as clear cut as thought. It's more typical, typically defined by the venter rather than the dorsal coloration. But yep, I'm just gonna probably shoot a picture or two of this one, but uh, enough video for now because it's sitting very nice. Let's see what we find next. We just walked past this huge cuddle. It's absolutely massive. The head is just giant on this thing. I was a bit like staring down the swamp over this side and I've never seen these in this particular area before. But one of them's like wandered and is ambushing right under this pillar on the edge of the boardwalk. <sighs> 
glad these guys are pretty um pretty placid. So Moon just spotted uh, Trimurosaurus albolabris. Even though these are very common around where we live in Hua Hin in the west, this is like a CF, probably a cryptic species, these southern ones. And uh, they're not so common down here. Uh, they have a weird like patchy distribution in the south. Uh, and I've never seen one in this particular area before, which is always cool. It's nice in situ as well. Like for a second I thought it might be Hagen Eye. Like I don't know why like that tail kind of threw me off, but uh, no, just a, just a nice albolabris. Again, not a species we're going to spend too long with. I might take a couple in situ snaps, otherwise we got bigger fish to fry. All right, so this trip just took a low-key disastrous turn. We uh, put the white lip pit viper down for me to photograph and uh, it moved a little bit. I uh, went to poke it in the face of a stick and it just leapt out and nabbed me on the finger. I got too close, got too complacent and uh, yeah, I can already feel the pain starting to set in. So we're just on our way to hospital ASAP. Um, bites of the finger are never fun. This is probably going to put a real dampener on this trip as in Definitely the next two days, I'm going to be at least out of action. It's depending on the severity on the, of the bite, could be longer. Okay, so swelling has definitely increased. The good news is there's no major discoloration around the bite area yet. We're just bombing it towards uh, the hospital in Trang. Um, fortunately, we got some people in the car. When I say some people, I mean one person who knows what they're talking about when it comes to this. So. Uh, it's good to have some reassurance and some good idea of what the process is going to be. It definitely helps to keep me like relaxed and not like thinking too much. All right, so arrived in hospital, they're about to do blood tests. I'm just sitting here with an ice pack on it, which honestly, I don't think it's doing anything. Bite area is looking pretty good. I'd say it looks worse on camera. It looks darker on camera than it does in real life. That's for sure. And even though the pain is very severe, when you touch it, that doesn't increase or increase the pain at all. I'm just keeping it elevated to drain blood away from the finger and uh, just kind of chilling and having a laugh with the guys here, so. All right, so um, how it's progressed to like, the swelling has progressed to like the bottom and I can't really close these fingers now. The pain is still largely restricted to my finger and it comes and goes in waves. Right now we're actually sort of at a low point for the pain. What's funny is that like by far the worst part of this experience has been getting a freaking COVID test. They shoved this stuff up my nose and I'm telling you, it was 10 times more painful than what was going on in my finger here, all right? And right now I'm in a, in a COVID test room and I can't be moved out of here until I test negative. Like this is so dumb being tested for COVID when I'm sitting here with a freaking snake bite. But at this point, I just want them to hurry up with the blood tests and just discharge me ASAP. Because I'm not gonna lie, I'm low key bored and hospitals suck. Okay, so update I took off the bandage, um, but the pain has progressed, uh, as has the swelling. I'd say the pain I'm feeling in my finger right now is, is like an eight. It's, it's possibly pushing a nine. It's, it's absolutely unbearable. I'm just like writhing around here, more or less. And the swelling has also like progressed to more or less most of my hand, barring my, my little finger and this part. The pain is really bad across that like very swollen lump at like, the top of the hand. Um, but nowhere is like anywhere like describable compared to my finger. Those marks on it are just pen markings that were done by the doctor. But yeah, that's the update for now. Um, we'll check in in a bit and see how things have progressed because I don't know if I can speak any longer. Okay, so uh, it's the next day now. I think it's going on 3 p.m. I was bitten at about uh, quarter past 10 last night. And the last update you got from me was maybe 10 and a half, 11 hours ago. Around four hours into the bite, the pain became like unbearable. It was excruciating. And I was like, God, how long is this going to continue? How much worse is it going to get? And then it just plateaued. And if anything, went down. And I know this may seem low-key masochistic, but I kind of been playing about with this and having some fun and seeing how long I could go without, uh, without morphine or any kind of painkillers. And I lasted the entire night and even managed to get some sleep. I've slept probably around four hours, which 
It's honestly not too bad. I was pretty surprised by that. But looking at the hand, you can see that the symptoms are not so severe, very, very localized. The swelling has kind of encapsulated my whole hand, barring like the end of my fingers and my thumb, but it's not spreading past the wrist. And uh, all the pain is largely concentrated in my index finger, which obviously, as you can see, is where most of the swelling is concentrated. Obviously, my blood work is all fine. My lymph nodes are sore, but they gave me some uh, anti-inflammatories for that just uh, recently, and that's definitely got a lot better. So look, I can move my arm around now, which is insane. I could not move my arm due to the pain in the lymph nodes. But the lymph nodes in my neck, completely fine. And honestly, lots of good signs to take from this. When I get up and walk around, that's when it becomes like excruciatingly painful, I believe, because the blood starts pumping around my body. And, uh, but if I just lie down and keep my hand elevated, I'm straight chilling. This is a very bearable experience and honestly is uh, pretty interesting, all things considered. But uh, yeah, you'll probably catch an update from me in uh, well a while because I don't think much is going to change. Okay, well I told you I wouldn't check in for a while and now I'm checking in when I'm checking out. Actually, I tried to check out last night, but the insurance uh, wouldn't let me. So I stayed the night, it was fine. I slept for like five and a half hours until they woke me at 6 a.m. And uh, things are looking really, really good. I told you we were, we were uh, had some good signs yesterday and the pain has uh, gone down to an almost negligible level. Sometimes when I, when I get the blood flowing there, the pain uh, becomes a bit more extreme, which is why I've got this sort of homemade sling that my girlfriend used her like scarf thingy for. But if you look at my hands, you can see that the coloration of the bitten finger is going way back to normal. It was like dark red yesterday. Uh, obviously, it's clear that the swelling's gone down. You can see my, the definition of my knuckles a bit better. And the color just, you know, the two hands don't look too different. This one's just a little bit more chubby. I can close these fingers. Uh, this one I can only close about that far before it gets too painful, but these ones I can close all the way. Thumb to about here, this area is still a bit swollen, but uh, yeah, my first venomous snake bite, uh, not so bad, honestly. I was prepared for the worst, and uh, honestly, I'm really, really lucky in a way, and also very happy that I've got a very strong body, which in the past has always been capable of fighting off all stings, bites, and issues I've had, and this is no different. So, feeling great, looking forward to getting out of here. David's gonna pick me up, he's uh, driving on his way now, and I think I'm gonna be out herping tonight. So I'll catch you in the next video, picking up tonight. Let's go.